4, and uh, in chapter 4, we are we started by uh, analyzing the infinitesimally small dipole, and this infinitesimally small dipole that we are considering, it is assumed to have uh, a source of the current from the center of the of the dipole, and at the end points it is expected to have, uh, wait a second, to have uh, currents equal to zero. And uh, now I'll just go over very fast. So elements that we are going to need today is that we said that uh, we are going to use a different approach when we find the electric fields. Uh, when, we, when we did this in chapter 3, we said that we are going to have the, the, the sources. From the sources, we are expected to find the vector potential, and from the vector potential, we are going to find the electric field and the magnetic field. Now, this is... Uh, so once we find the, the vector, the magnetic, the vector potential A in any coordinate system, which would be AX, AY, and the AZ, we can also at the same time find the, the projections of these vectors along the AR, A theta, and A phi. Now, one thing that I might uh, remind you is that for actually this equation, so this equation, which is the very, the very first on, on this slide, where we see that the vector potential A it is uh, apparently it is along the AZ, okay, and uh, we have a, a specific source, but the value of A, and the source is the current actually. So the source source is the current, and it looks like the A it is going to be equal to the integral along the DZ, where DZ is in fact the the axis over which the antenna is lying. So here we have from minus L over two to plus L over 2, and we are trying to find the vector potential A at a far away point. But one thing which is uh, something that we can remember is that the direction of the... So if, it, if this is the antenna, and this is the z-axis, then the direction of A, it, is, it has the same direction as the, as the current. So if this current was pointing along the x-axis, then the vector A would also point along the x-axis. Depending on the problem that we are discussing, for example, let's have a look at this result that we see here, which apparently is an infinitesimally small dipole pointing along the z-axis. We find A is along the z-axis, but we can use, sorry, it's this way, we can use this uh, rotational matrix uh, operators to obtain the A, along the AR, A theta, and A phi, sorry. So, uh, so we can uh, continue. I think the last time we, we covered this material, we discussed a little bit regarding the, let's say, the relative power which can be associated with different terms. And this would mean actually, so we just want to, to review a very little piece of information. So we, last time, for an infinitesimal small dipole, we obtained the following electric fields here. These are the three components of the electric field. We notice that the AR, it has two components, one, uh, which is just the constant one in the parenthesis. And uh, the other component is 1 over JKR, which is a complex uh, contribution. These are, uh, again, summarized all the field components that we have. And uh, the power density is just going to be equal to uh, e, e cross uh, complex conjugate of H. One thing that we can notice here is that the E, it has two components. One it is along the ER and AR, and one component is along the A, uh, E theta. So, but uh, 
the E theta itself, it is purely imaginary. So, or let's say, let's have a look here. So when we calculate the, the flux density, which has units of uh, watt per meter square, uh, based on the values, so if you go back, one thing that I, I, we can remind you is that the field component along the AR, which is being radiated, it has one real component and one complex component, okay? The E theta, it is uh, the major components, they are purely, so the major components is when you have this coefficient one, it is purely complex value, okay? So that's one thing that uh, it's worth uh, noticing. And the H, the major component for the H phi, it is a complex component. So you can just can notice the J in the, uh, in the expression is at the very uh, beginning. Now, here we observe that, uh, now this is a little more, more, not more clear, but at least you can, uh, uh, it's good to derive it, uh, these expressions at least once, where you can find the WR, and WR is always a cross product between the uh, A theta uh, uh, and the A phi. Uh, and it's also obvious here because WR it is found as E theta cross product complex conjugate of uh, H phi. Now, these two, num uh, these two values, we just multiply all the numbers with each other. So let's notice E theta and H phi. Uh, here we have those. So that would mean obtaining this whole term down here uh, with this other uh, component H phi in here. And then this is what we obtain. Uh, we can notice that the radiated power it is uh, it has a major component which is real, which means that the the, power, the energy is being radiated away, but the the power which is in the direction of theta and direction of theta it is we can assume it as uh, because if this is r this is the angle of theta and it looks like the power density in this direction which is the w theta this is purely uh, J i, let's hold it this way, it is purely imaginary, okay? And uh, the radiated power density along the A r, or let's consider if we have this direction, so this W r, it is both, it has one component which is real and one component which is, uh, which is complex. Now, one thing that I can say from now is that, uh, uh, let me think for a moment, now, what is something which is very essential is the aspect that the radiated power, this is related to the resistive, uh, to the resistance or the impedance of the antenna, okay? So there is a relationship between these. But this is the radiated power, the real part, okay? We can have, we have also the, the power, which is the complex, Part. This is related to the reactance of the antenna. Now, uh, we are going to mention this one in this in chapter 4 for a few times. We can also notice this from the textbook. It is always making a reference that the radiated power, the real component, it is directly related to the resistance of the... Uh, which is also a real part. And the power, which is radiated, but which is a complex component, which we can see here, for example, we have the second one, which is one term which is purely imaginary, at least the one which, uh, which is uh, radiated in this direction, which would correspond to this type of uh, power, uh, let's say, uh, motion, or at least it is... Uh, so if you want to calculate the flux, we have to select an area here, and then we integrate over the, this W theta integrate over this cross section. Again, it's purely complex, and that one is related with the reactants. And this reactants, this is equivalent to some components which include, may include an inductor or may include a capacitor C. Now, uh, even though in, in the chapter 4 there is a few uh, references to this uh, aspect, we're going to do this one, uh, or this is covered in more detail in, uh, in chapter 8, but here what is worth mentioning is that 
uh, whenever we calculate some power, we should uh, immediately relate it to some resistance of the antenna itself. Now, this is a repetition of what we did, uh, what we saw in the previous slides. But so this is uh, essential. So the real power is always it can be uh, denoted as one over two i square r. So or one over two vi. Okay. So this is how uh, we used to denote this one. So from here we can conclude or we can find an expression for the radiation resistance. Uh, here we have an example. I think we covered this one the last time. And whenever we analyze the fields, uh, we have we have the near field which is pretty close to the uh, to the antenna or to the source. We have also next to the near field, we have the radiation near field, which is the, let's see, so this, these are still the equations of near field. The general expression, which are on the, on the left side, we can obtain the expressions approximated uh, in, the, in the right side because because what happens here is that uh, the very first term, it is, so when you say the very first term, here in this case, in the, the near field, the one, it is much smaller than one over JKR, one over JKR. So if this is the case, this factor uh, dominates, and that is why we see in the e equation 420A, we see a, a dependence of one over r cubed. Okay, so if you are very close, this is how uh, it changes. E theta also, we notice that it is proportional to one over r cubed again, because there is uh, one over r term before the sign theta, and we have also, so let's notice this for a moment. So we have this one over r term, it's, it's right here, and uh, one, one over r, kr square is also here. Now, this is the dominating term right here that we uh, underscored this one. So that's why we're going to see this uh, term here, which is 1 over kr cube. Similarly, we observe also for the magnetic field uh, intensity. And uh, always, whenever we compare the domain or the, the region where we are doing the calculations, we're going always to consider this factor, the kr factor. Now, this KR, we, we could also uh, analyze the near field or the far field. We could conclude this also just based on the distance i. But this should not be the case because the, we should also, uh, what is essential is the phase difference as the wave is propagating. And the phase difference, it is strongly dependent on the wavelength or on the frequency. So if you have an antenna and this is operating to some frequency f, this is related to some uh, wavelength lambda, and this lambda, this is related to 2 pi to k, which is 2 pi over lambda. And then when we analyze, uh, or when we want to determine whether we are in the near field or in the far field, uh, we should not look only at r, but we should look at this factor, which is equal to uh, k to kr. And what we are going to observe also is that uh, uh, this r, this can be, Whenever we integrate, we are going to assume, so this is some z prime, and uh, often we conduct some approximations, which could be first order or second order approximations. And uh, in, uh, so in this case, we could approximate, so if this is the r, this could be the r prime, which in the far field, R converges to R prime, and uh, but in the intermediate regions, this would not be the, the case. And uh, but in order to determine whether we are losing, uh, whether we can use a specific approximation or not, we have to uh, to always take a notice here, and then the phase difference between one value and the other, we would consider this function, or it should be equal to k r prime minus r. We're going to cover an example here uh, later, but let's uh, move fast. This is kr, this is when, uh, this will be the case when kr is much larger than one. 
in that case, the equations or the far field equation, they will look as shown here in the slide. Once we have the E theta and the H phi, we can uh, determine uh, a wave impedance. And we should also notice that we have to, co to consider the ratio between orthogonal directions of the electric field and the magnetic field intensity. Okay. And uh, let's see, would we even, actually we don't even have the chance to, to pick up another pair of electric field that can have a conjugate magnetic field intensity because we have ER and uh, other than ER, no, actually this is the only case because this is the only pair where the direction of E cross product with the direction of H, it would give us the radiating power because the radiating power is pointing along the AR. And AR, this would be equal only for A theta cross A phi. Okay. Anyway, so this is another possible uh, combination. It would be the cross product between AR and H phi. But in this case, that would not make the, uh, the radiated power, but it would consider the power which is a reactant power. Let's see, here we have an example. I don't remember if we uh, saw this one, but let's have a look. Uh, yeah, I think we did not, we have not covered this one uh, in the previous sessions. So we have an infinitesimal di dipole uh, antenna and uh, we have to determine and interpret the vector effective length. Now, this quantity, we defined this one in chapter two. Chapter two was really, had a really volume of information, a huge volume of information. And uh, we can always refer to the cheat sheet or the formulas from, uh, from chapter two. Uh, and uh, in this case, so let's say, so we are asking at what incidence angle does the open circuit maximum voltage occur at the output terminals, okay. So we have an incident wave which has an electric field of 10 millivolt per meter. Now, this is the electric field. The moment we are asked about the quantity, which is the, talking about the maximum voltage. Now, maximum voltage is measured with volts. And uh, this quantity, which should be related to the elect electric field component, which in this case, it is uh, 10 millivolt per meter. And uh, we might expect to multiply it with the effective length. So we have an antenna. It's going to have an effective length. We multiply this effective length measured in meters with the 10 millivolt per meter, which would be the electric field uh, intensity. We have the length of the dipole in this case, apparently it's equal to uh, 10 centimeter. And the length of the dipole is the L, which we see in all of these uh, uh, expressions. Now, E theta, it's uh, the electric field in the theta direction, it is a given. Okay, so we are given this equation, but we should somehow uh, extract from this equation the, the dot product between the effective length and the electric field. Okay, so this is, let's see for a moment. So we're just trying to, So always the E theta can be written as a, a, a group of terms, which is electric field, dot product with vector effective length. Now, once we extract out the A theta in this way, which is also a little tricky because the only way to get uh, a plus one, we should consider the dot product between the minus A theta multiplied by minus A theta again. We're just taking out one L which is actually, maybe I can do it like this. Uh, actually, where is this? I forget, there is a drawing option. Lines. So, somebody can help me. Where is this drawing thing in the... Uh, uh, click on the photo. I don't know. No, they're doing something bad. I click on the photo, but uh, 
uh, insert design, design, design. No, 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 no. I think you have to go to view. To view? Yes, help me here. So I just want to find a pen to write down here, but I don't see it anyway. I can I can try to. I thought I could use these shapes, rectangle basic shapes. Draw. There there used to be an option. Anyway, so we'll do it like this then. So this L, which we see here, no, actually it's better. So the shapes. So this L, which is here, we're just hand picking it, picking it out here, and this sine theta, we're just picking it out here, and this is effectively we're trying to def to determine what is the effective length. So this is the effective length, and uh, we want to get now a maximum possible effective length. So uh, which is in this case, it would give the angle with respect to the antenna, which in this case it can be uh, this one, which is shown in in the board, and the when can we have a maximum effective length? It is going to be one where this sine theta is equal to one. Sine theta is equal to one when the when angle is 90 degrees. So this means that if we have an antenna which is pointing like this and it has an electric field which is shown on the board like uh, like E theta as uh, is shown over there, that means that the wave has to approach at an angle of 90 degrees with respect to the uh, orientation of the antenna. In this case, if this is the, if it's gonna be 90 degree, then the maximum value of the effective length is simply going to be equal to L. This L is 10 centimeters or 10 to the power minus one meter. And uh, in this case, we just have to multiply the, what's the name? the the electric field, which is 10 millivolt per meter, we multiply it with the 10 to the power minus one uh, effective length scale, and we get one millivolt, okay? So we get one millivolt, and I believe this is uh, clear. Now, uh, always when we have these antennas, we try to, to determine, sorry, we try to determine what is the uh, directivity of these antennas, and uh, we're not going to, to spend too much time here in, uh, with regard to this aspect because we have done this one uh, in chapter two extensively. Just this is kind of a reminder that uh, we can easily determine what is the radiated power, the W. And from the radiated power, if we multiply it with the R square, this would be the radiation intensity. So then, uh, if we have the radiation intensity, which is here the U, that means that the integral is going to be over a solid angle. So this is a solid angle and not the total surface area. If we had, if we were using the W, which is shown here, this, uh, sorry. So if we are using this, we would have to integrate over R squared sine theta d theta d phi, but now we are using the intensity and then the expression will be slightly different. We just need to, to substitute all the relevant uh, quantities and that's what we are going uh, here for example this is the the directivity of an infinitesimally small antenna and the infinitesimally small antenna that expression we can uh, simply derive from the from the expressions that we can see uh, over over here which in this case, it would be simply, so the dominant term, which is going to affect the directivity. If you remember also the, the, the topics that we covered in chapter two, the fundamental term, which is going to affect directivity is this sine squared theta. So this sine squared theta term that you see in the second expression here, it's going to result into, so sine squared, if you have sine squared, it's going to multiply it by sine theta because it's also clearly shapes, so let's show it here. So we have this term here and this term here. Once we integrate, we are going to find uh, values which are going to produce for us a directivity of three over two. So these are the values for uh, infinitesimally, infinitesimally small dipole. The moment we have an, uh, some uh, directivity, we can also define a maximum effective aperture. Now, this is an infinitesimally small dipole. It has a radius equal to zero. It is a wire antenna. It is linear. 
but still, even though it is linear, we can associate a maximum effective aperture for this uh, specific antenna. Now, this is the radiation uh, pattern for this uh, infinitesimal small dipole, where the dipole, as shown here in the figure, it is pointing along the z-axis, and uh, the the pattern it's uh, it's shown in this uh, in this uh, how can I say in this round or donut shaped uh, shape, and uh, the value is what is given here, and what is essential. It's also the aspect of being able to determine uh, radiation resistance. Now, this is just a summary, which is actually most of this summary, it relates to chapter three, because chapter three, it was all about the mathematical apparatus, which we have to use during the whole textbook. That's why there is a lot of reference to what we have uh, learned in that chapter. For example, even the way to calculate the E theta, E phi, H, H theta, H phi, we use the equations over there, and then from chapter three, and then we just calculate the dot product between the electric field, magnetic field, we find the W radiated power, we can find the radiation intensity, the U, and then we can uh, calculate the total radiated power of the antenna, then we can uh, determine, once we find the total radiated power, we find also what is the maximum value of the uh, radiation intensity that can help us finding the the directivity. Now we move now to uh, to another uh, construct, antenna construct, which would be the uh, let's say a small dipole. So we don't have an infinitesimally small dipole, but we have let's say a small one. And uh, for this dipole, we are so infinitesimally small dipole. It was anything which was smaller than one fiftieth of the wavelength. So we divide the wavelength by 100, multiplied by 2. That would be the uh, infinitesimally small. But anything between ground over 50 and ground over 10, that would make uh, what we call a uh, small, small dipole. And here we see that the current, it is going to be, uh, it can be described or approximated as shown here in the graph. So uh, I, I might... Uh, suggest to you, that's what I find it, uh, more useful, is, is to consider, so personally I like to visualize it this way, so this would be the current as a function of Z, and uh, when Z is positive, in fact this graph here is also done because the antenna is pointing along the Z, but personally I like to think that as uh, the maximum, as Z is increasing, the current is decreasing, and as Z is decreasing, the, I'm sorry, uh, when Z is increasing for Z negatives, we get a positive slope, and uh, for positive Z, when Z is still increasing, we get a negative slope, okay? Now, I like it this way, because in the equations of the uh, electric fields, it is relatively easy for any uh, student to notice that uh, when you have the current which is equal to some constants, so let's say uh, 2z, and you can have also another current which is minus 2z, you can easily denote, notice a, a negative slope in this domain, positive slope in this domain, but uh, this is also one way to, uh, to think about it. So this is the current, sorry, this, this one, I apologize that this is not possible to see this, I thought this was... Okay, so this is the equation for the, uh, for the current. So this is I, Z. The current is a function of Z, and uh, it's also expected to some degree that this is the current, because this current, it has the same unit as this I0. Sine has no unit, but uh, what I said before a while, when I said that uh, The, the approximation of the current. This is really, okay, I'm sorry, I've cropped this one unintentionally. So again, the current for, for a specific domain, these general equations which are shown here, which depend as on uh, which change or vary as a sign of uh, Kz, when we do an approximation here, we notice that 
when z is positive the current it has a negative slope so this is what i was trying to say before uh, uh, a while but when z is negative the current is going to have a positive slope and the, the So this would be the negative slope here whenever the Z is a positive value, which is something we try to uh, represent here on the board. Now, this is a small dipole, this is the current, and if the current, it looks like this, which is uh, approximated, it is very easy for us to integrate over the current and to find the A. So let's not forget that the, the vector potential A, it was often, there is a group of term, integrating over from minus L over 2, 2 plus L over 2, times the dz, okay? Or, so, or an expression, in this case, it's not going to be simply dz, it's going to be, uh, let's say, we have a constant psi, it's going to be a constant value, which is I0, let's have a look here, uh, minus 2 over L z prime I0. We, we should never forget, that uh, with z prime and also x prime and y prime we denote the sources so the sources where so whenever we are integrating over z prime that means that we are integrating over the whole component okay so that means that uh, or what we can say here is uh, for example actually we'll come to this uh, uh, when we are going to do some approximations, we are going to mention this again. But for the moment, kind reminder that the, the prime notation, it is used for the, uh, to denote the, the sources. Okay. Let's move on. So again, yeah, we said that A, the vector A, it would be simply the integral of the mu mu zero i times the current divided by four pi times one over r term and e to the power j k r. So uh, in electromagnetic field theory, before going to uh, to the chapter or to the course of electromagnetic wave, we used to uh, we often we have solved several examples where we were, we were given the current and we would integrate over the whole length where the wire was, and the, we used to find this vector A. So a good difference is you could go back to the, to the lecture notes of electromagnetic field theory, and you could remind this, uh, uh, these equations. So here, we're just going to integrate over the I0. If we do that, whenever uh, we, can find the, we can find the expression for A, which is the function of x, y, and, uh, and z. Now, once we find the, so if using the A that we find from the, from the previous slide, we can, uh, we can determine the electric field components uh, as, shown, as shown here in this, uh, in this slide for assuming the far field uh, domain. Then here actually it's, hmm, this is a more, so this A, this is enough actually. So from this A, it is easy to, to uh, describe the, the electric field. And this electric field, we can find it from, uh, from chapter three. We have the equations. 3.58, oh no. Three point fifty eight and three point fifty eight B. So if we look at those equations, uh, from this A we can easily determine the E theta and E, uh, e theta and the H phi. Now for this specific uh, geometry, we we get that E R it's also uh, converging to zero. For the infinitesimally small uh, antenna, 
for the infinitesimally small dipole antenna, we had that the uh, ER was, uh, was different from zero. But here, the component of the electric field is going to be equal to zero. But this is enough for us, because if we take the cross product of the E theta with H phi, we can get the power density, which is uh, pointing outwards, or at least far away from the, from the source. So we are uh, radiating power, and this one, this is radiated power. We can also find the radiation uh, intensity. And uh, once we find the radiated power, we can still find this uh, resistance of the antenna, which is somehow equivalent to resistance of the antenna because it can be written that the total radiated power is one over two I zero squared uh, I zero squared times the R, the resistance R. Now, the similarly, we can find the directivity. Again, in the directivity, we have the same uh, equations that we have often seen. And uh, in this case, once we determine the, the... So let's have a look here. So the W radiated power Maybe it's best, I just want to sit for a moment and just uh, take a couple of notes. So this W radiated power, this would simply be equal to the product between E theta and H phi, okay? So once we do that, uh, that, that looks that the J, J times J, so this term, it's equal to minus one, okay? Then, this is minus one so far, let's, let's do it like this. This is minus one. Then we have the impedance eta. I don't know how can I write this one, but if Christina helps me, what should I write here <laughs> in uh, in Latin alpha alphabet to get this eta here? No. Professor, I guess you may go to equations at insert. Uh, that's correct, but uh, I want to write it. So you are saying, but uh, we can insert an equation which is going to be eta, 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 eta. I don't see eta here. But eta in Latin alphabet, what letter is it? The impedance. Uh, it's going to be, so I'm looking for this letter. Sorry, uh, anyway, so it's, it's the impedance which is notice it's here, eta. Is this eta in Greek? Anyone knows this? Yes, yes. 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 But what letter is it in Latin alphabet? Oh, I don't know. No idea. Okay, let's, let's write it eta. So the j and the j, we multiply them. Eta is, is this factor here. And then this is going to have the k square, i zero square, because we see uh, then we have here k squared, k squared times i zero squared, sorry, times i zero uh, squared times l squared. So this is i zero. Let's do this i squared times uh, times l squared times uh, what we notice here is also that uh, whenever when we multiply the e with the complex conjugate of the h this term here this is going to be e to the power plus jkr so multiplying uh, sorry multiplying this uh, e to the power minus jkr with the complex conjugate that we see down here they will end up into being equal to one, okay? So then here we have uh, j eta k square i zero square l square. These terms that are underscored, they all uh, add up to one, divided by eight pi r square times sine theta square. Okay, so this is what we obtain here for the radiated power density. So this is sine theta 
to the power squared divided by, so the other terms are all what is essential here when we're doing the division, is that we are dividing with uh, 1 over r squared. So this is r to the power squared. Also, we're dividing by uh, 8 squared divided by pi squared, okay? So now, uh, let's see. So we have the complex term, this is completely gone. And uh, so this is the in, in, impedance, as you said. And then when we try to find the total radiated power, the total radiated power, it is going to be the integral of all of these terms over uh, the complete surface area of a, of, of a sphere, okay? And now, what, whenever we do the integral, the power that is going to be equal to, now it might be time to insert an equation, but very much should do better. So this is the integral of the, this. Uh, so j times j is minus one. That's minus one times, uh, Where are these letters? I thought function, give me no comparator, integral. Should I find them only here? I thought Greek letters. Okay, so we have minus eta times, uh, times k square times uh, no, let's do this times L uh, uh, okay, times I zero square uh, times the L square, then here we have the sine okay, sine sine theta square and then we have to integrate over the We have here r squared sine theta d theta d phi. And I hope we find phi in a short amount of time. d phi. So we are integrating here over all of these terms. But what is going to, going to be really, and also let's notice that here, in the radiated power density, we have a term which is 1 over r squared. Okay, so here, in this equation, let's not forget that we have here uh, equation, the fraction. This is 1 over the r squared. So in this integral, this r squared is going to cancel this r squared. So the whole uh, shape of the integral, it will strongly depend only on the integral of sine to the power 3 theta, d theta, d phi. d phi, it is independent of everything. So then we can, we can take out this d phi. So if we delete it right here, we should immediately include here uh, 2 pi in the front. So here we have here 2 times Pi. This is the integral over the d phi, right? So then uh, r square is all cancel out each other. Then we just have to look for what is the integral of sine cube uh, d theta integrating from 0 to pi. So this is how uh, we can determine that this integral of sine to the power 3 theta, we have, uh, we have different techniques to write it. So this is going to be integral of Symbols equation 
So we know that the integral of sine to the power uh, three theta, this uh, d theta, this is equal to the uh, integral of sine times one minus cosine square, okay, cosine one minus cosine square theta. Uh, okay, anyway, so this is d theta. And uh, then using a, a couple of tricks for substituting the, the variables, we can find the, the, the numbers which end up into being uh, in line with these results that are shown here. Now, in ch second chapter, we solve a couple of examples, such as uh, integrating sine sin to the power three, theta d theta, sine to the power four, theta d theta, but uh, we are not going to do them all of them now. Now, we are assuming here a finite length dipole, and uh, before we do this, uh, we just need to, we, we can just once again go over the separation of the three re relevant regions, which would be the uh, reactive near field, radiating near field, which is the Fresnel region, and also the far field, the Fraunhofer region. Now, uh, the re what we need to do here is that once we determine whether we are in the near field or in the far field, uh, we are going to see that often we'll have to approximate some value of R because this integral is not, cannot be solved analytically everywhere. For this reason, we are going to see uh, a relationship, wait a second, so uh, this R is the distance of each uh, source to the point where we want to measure the, let's say, the, the fields. Okay, so let's assume that this is the dipole and uh, we want to find the relevant fields at this point and the relevant fields will be the vector potential A, the E, and the H. So that's what we want to find. But uh, in order to do this, we have always to determine what is the distance from each source component because we are going to integrate over these. And uh, when we are integrating over these, we are going to see that this distance r, so let's write here, the capital R, which is shown here in this slide, it can be written as x minus x prime square plus y minus y prime square plus z minus z prime square, uh, where, as we said before, x prime, y prime, uh, z prime, they are the, where, the, uh, where the sources are. Now, our source, it has zero thickness, so that's why x prime, y prime are zero. So this expression can be approximated as shown in, uh, in here. So this is the r. And now, here, this r, it can also be shown as, uh, as seen here in the slide. This z, we can also denote, uh, we can write the, the, the z. Let's, let's uh, wait for a second. So this x squared plus y squared plus uh, z squared, which in fact is going to be the, the distance from the center of the wire. Okay, so let's look at the numbers. So r squared, it is this little r okay, that we show here. And the capital R is the distance of each current element to the point of interest. And uh, if we are in the far field regime, we may assume that the capital R is equal to the little r. Now, here I try to say that uh, r prime, etc. But uh, and then, so because we can have a look here, the small r square is what it is. And then we can write the the capital R as a function of little r. Once we do that, we we can do a couple of approximations, which are shown which are shown here in the last line of equations. And now, uh, depending on what uh, region we are, we are going to truncate. So you can assume the expansion of R the same way that we used to have Taylor series expansion. So we have uh, orders. So we are having uh, approximation after approximations, but always. The last term 
it's always much smaller than the previous terms. So depending which region we are, we can, uh, we can truncate or we can completely discard initially, let's say, this term. So we can start it like, like this. So we can uh, discard this one, but then at a different domain, we can also discard both these two terms, okay? And uh, in some, in the very far region, we can also discard the last three terms. So depending on uh, which domain we are. So here, this is the approximations that we are often going to see. And uh, always our intention is so, uh, to find the, the vector A. How do we write the vector A? Vector A, it is always equal to integral of mu zero i divided by, in this case, is 4 i over r e to the power minus j k i. So this is always the, this is, this is A. This is what we used to do from, uh, from electromagnetic field theory. And if you remember, we had also the neo savart law. Bio savart law, it was, we had a wire, sometimes it was a straight wire, sometimes it was a circular wire, and we had to find these field components at, at some distance. So this is what we need to, uh, to remember. Now, uh, we can take the constants out of the integral. We are going to integrate over the, the line where the current is oscillating, because this is the antenna, okay? it's a wire where the current is oscillating. And uh, once we do it, we have, to, uh, we have to write these expressions. One thing that I can bring you to, or that I can remind you, is that the expression for the current, so we are in, in, on slide 59. I don't remember where this was exactly, but so for the current, we can substitute these expressions, okay? Which is one, so current here, it's, uh, if it is Z positive, it's one minus two over LZ prime. Let's go back. So we may have to substitute here whatever the current expression is, okay? We have not substituted that yet. We substitute that expression now. So we're, we are slide 16. The current was here, I believe. No, here, here, where was it? Okay, sorry, it's here. So now these two, uh, since we're going to integrate from minus L over two to plus L over two in the first, uh, in the negative values of z, we integrate from minus L over 2 this current, sine L over 2 plus z prime. For the positive z, we have this, so we are integrating the summation of these two terms. But uh, we still have this, so we substituted the current. We have now to figure out in which domain we are so that we can uh, put the value for the capital R, what type of approximation we are going to use. If we have, so this is the general expression, and now we start discussing in the far field region, in the Fraunhofer region. This is just a reminder of how we do the, uh, the expansion. What is the most relevant uh, part here is this second equation, uh, which is in red color, and also the one in green, which is the expansion. Now, this expansion are uh, especially uh, when x is a small value. So here we have again the binomial expansion. And uh, in the far field, we are selecting only the first two terms. Okay, so let's go back here. I just want you to remind, let me find where that was. So that R, I think it's here, sorry. It's here, so now this is the R. It depends now, so this is the general expression for R. And then uh, in the far field region, we just have to pick the first two terms. Okay, so let's say we discard this one and this one. So we discard the one over R term and one over R squared term. So this is gone. And uh, this, is, this is the approximation for R. Once we substitute that expression, so again, so this is, uh, this is canceled out. The first to be, uh, huh. now, uh, now that we are truncating some terms, which means that truncating, we're just extracting some uh, essential uh, components from the R. Let's say uh, we are taking out some, uh, some part, but we have to quantify this one. So we have to figure out how much we are really uh, removing 
to calculate the error. So the term that we have truncated is this term, which is one over r. Apologies again why this one is not visible in this uh, in this slide, but here this is one uh, z prime sine square theta. So this term here, the maximum value of this one is for sure that uh, it is maximum whenever the sine theta is equal to pi over two. So then uh, we have we have the k one over r times z prime over 2r. So if we substitute for z square l square, then uh, we have the following uh, expression. So imagine for a moment that z prime is equal to l over 2. Actually, it's, it's also denoted here. So it looks like the maximum phase error that we are going to expect from our calculations are going to be equal to to this term, to the maximum value of this term that we're trying to denote here, okay? So that's why if we are in, a, so this is far region uh, approximation. If we are in the near field, then probably we would have to, to, ex to remove this term. If we remove this term, the error that we have to calculate or that we have to, to know how much error we might have in our calculations, we would have to find the maximum value of this term here. Now, we have truncated the last two terms, error is given by this one, and then we figured it out as a function of uh, k and the size of the, uh, of the antenna, this is what we are going to obtain. k is equal to 2 pi over lambda, okay? And this is maximum phase error. The phase is measured in radians, so it has no unit. So this term here, which is k times L squared divided by 8R, this really has units of radians because you have L squared uh, in the numerator, that is meter squared divided by 8R, meter squared divided by meter, but we are multiplying it with k. k, it is inverse meters because it is equal to 2 pi over lambda. So this is really the phase difference, uh, the phase. Now, this is the maximum phase error. Now, we have a, a threshold level which we consider an acceptable error, which is in this case, so this maximum phase error, we can uh, assume, not assume, but we have selected a value of 1 8 pi radians, or 22 degrees. 22 degrees uh, phase difference, it is going to be uh, a distance. So let's try to see the equivalent expressions. So this is, let's assume, so this is a full uh, period. This is in meters, this is lambda. In phase, this is 2 pi. Okay, so this is 2 pi. Now, half of this, it is pi. Half of this is going to be pi. We are, so this is pi. If we divide this in two, this is pi over two. We divide it in four, this is pi over four. We divide it by two again, this is pi over eight. So the phase difference that we are accepting to be acceptable whenever we do an approximation, it is going to be this much, okay? That it is going to be this fraction out of a possible full phase. Or we can also have an equivalent of how much wavelength, how much more, is the wave going to travel if we did not uh, truncate that term? It's going to travel this much, okay? So let's say if we have, if we are moving uh, a wave from this point to some point R, if we have, this is the path, we may expect, let's say, a wave like this. The error that we are going to, that, to observe they're going to be this much. So this is going to travel this fraction, okay? And try to, uh, to, uh, to denote the equivalent uh, phase difference. Now, in the wave propagation, the, the difference in the phase travel is a very essential uh, parameter because uh, you might, you're going to see for sure this one in the future if you take a similar uh, course. So, the, 
There is a traveling distance, which is the geometric length scale, but there is also the optical path. The optical path of a wave traveling it strongly depends also on the on how much the phase is uh, is changing. So in principle, uh, as long as the error if it is this much, when I say this much, it's like this is the two pi. We're just picking up uh, this little fraction. We may accept that. So that means that uh, we can use uh, this approximation in case the distance from the center of the line antenna is equal to 2L squared divided by lambda. So, or let me say it this way, R should be larger than this specific value. So it should be somehow in a far region, okay, to do this approximation. It is imperative. Kjo nuk mund tishtë e që rëja do jetë në vëmër se dy lëka tropë më lëna, se të do ishën shumë afer, dhe të stajtë, nuk dhe përdojnë do të për afersime. We can have a short break, if you agree. Would you like to have a short break? Okay, press start the tab, let me push him, sir.